Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. The way we do that here in First Five is by spending some time together digging into the Word of God and by praying together. And so every morning we read one chapter of Scripture together, and currently we are working our way through the book of Genesis. And so today we come to Genesis chapter 17, and so I hope when we're all done this morning, you'll take a few moments to read the whole of Genesis chapter 17. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of it. We'll be looking at verses 15 through 22. So if you have your Bible handy or you want to pull it up on your phone app, the Bible app on your phone, or just Google it, I'd invite you to join me in Genesis chapter 17, beginning in verse 15. God also said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarai, but her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her and will surely give her a son by you. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and he said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah build, bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Then God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard you, and I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers, and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish will be with Isaac, whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with Abraham, God went away up from him. Have you ever had one of those moments when you burst out laughing, even when you knew you shouldn't have? It just really wasn't the appropriate moment. It wasn't the right time. I don't think, honestly, that Abraham meant to laugh at God, but he just couldn't help it. When God said that Abraham... And God said to Abraham, rather, that he still intended to fulfill the promise that Abraham and Sarah would have a child together. The idea seemed so unimaginable that Abraham couldn't help but laugh. After all, the promise probably seemed unimaginable years ago earlier when they first heard it, when, when Abraham was 75 and Sarai was 65. But now, 25 more years have gone by since the original promise. And they had given up all hope. This is the kind of thing that just wasn't possible. But here's the thing, nothing is impossible for God. When a relationship has gotten so far off the rails that it seems as though it could not possibly be reconciled, remember that nothing is impossible for God. When the doctor says, that the diagnosis is undeniable and there is no hope, no worldly cure. Remember that nothing is impossible for God. When the mortgage is three months behind and the bank is knocking at the door, when a child has fallen so deeply into addiction that there seems to be no way back. We only need to look at the life of Abraham 
and Sarah to be reminded that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is beyond His reach. Nothing is beyond hope. There are going to be times in our lives when it seems like there is no real hope for a solution. Times when we would laugh out loud if someone were to try to tell us that it would be okay and that it would all work out. But we serve a God of the impossible. We serve a God who splits the seas, who heals the incurable, who raises the dead. We serve a God who provides hope where there seems to be no hope. So, when it seems unimaginable that a situation could ever possibly be redeemed, just remember Abraham and Sarah and be reminded that we serve a God of the impossible. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, there may very well be people listening today who seem to be in a situation where there is no possible solution, where there seems to be no hope, perhaps for reconciliation or for healing or for rescue or for redemption. But remind us through the story of Abraham and Sarah that you are the God of the impossible. There is nothing beyond your power. There is nothing beyond your reach. There is no situation so far gone that you cannot redeem it. And so help us to never lose hope, Lord. Help us to hold fast to the promises that you have given us. Even when it seems like it's been a long time and a solution simply isn't coming. Help us to be reminded that you are God of the impossible. And we thank you and we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day. And I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.